Okay, so it's January the 12th, 2022, and I wanted to create a video today because I've been seeing a lot lately on social media, guys asking about buying lawn mowing businesses from other uh, guys that have them for sale. And I see a lot of stuff out there that people just don't know what they're getting into when they're looking at buying a lawn care business, uh, lawn mowing specifically. And then the guys that are selling them, the, the absolute unrealistic expectations that they have for selling, which tells me that they don't know what they're doing either. They don't understand business valuation. Um, and I don't know if you've ever watched Shark Tank, but if you've watched it every week ever since it opened up or you know whenever it would come out, um, it doesn't mean that you're a business valuation expert, especially when it comes to lawn care, lawn mowing specifically. So I'm kind of shooting this from the hip today, but before I get going, um, if you would go ahead and subscribe to the page, uh, like the video if you like. As I say in all my videos, guys, uh, this is my experience, my advice, um, you might do it differently. You might disagree, and that's fine. But hopefully, you take something away from this video that helps you to grow a little bit moving forward. The first thing I want to talk about briefly is when you're looking at buying a guy's business, understand that you need to know right up front, are you getting the phone number that's listed with the business? Because if you're not getting the phone number and he's been in business for any amount of time, then you know he could be starting another business or doing something else with that. You're not going to get the leads from the business and the reputation that he's built over time. Having that been said, also look online and find out if there's any negative reviews about the guy or the business that you're looking at buying. Um, does he have bad reviews on Angie's list? I mean, I don't know that the, the BBB, the Better Business Bureau, is really relevant anymore. I mean, they've tried to get me to get on with them for, ever since I started back in 2008, and I won't do it. I just don't think it's necessary. But you've got Facebook. Um, you've got Google reviews. I mean, look into that kind of stuff and see what you're getting into. Has he treated his customers right? Does he have you know, a good rating. Um, I'm not so much worried about, you know, bad reviews because it doesn't matter what you do in this industry. The more time you spend in it, you're going to find there are going to be people out there that have unrealistic expectations and may give you bad reviews when you've done nothing wrong. And by the same token, people that don't know what they're doing will give you an outstanding review um, and when you might have done basic work. Uh, so get in and find out what type of an online reputation that person has. Um, and understand right from the start that if you're buying that, you're buying into that, that's all going to be passed on to you. You're going to need the phone number. Find out, does a guy have a website? And if he has a website, check it out. And when was it last updated? Uh, are you getting the equipment also with the um, business? Um, and if you are, if you're not real good at mechanic work, have it looked at. Take it to a mower shop and, and ask him, hey, can you look over this more? And I understand you're going to have to spend a little money to do that. It wouldn't be much. But anyone that's serious about selling their business isn't going to be against you doing that, especially if you're willing to pick up the cost, um, which would be well spent on your behalf because you don't want to buy something that with part of the incentive of buying it is getting the equipment to find out that you're getting junk. And the truth of the matter is so many guys out there that are doing this don't know what to look for. You might learn over time as I've learned some things, but there's a whole lot that I still don't know. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, if I'm going to buy a business... Uh, I, I wouldn't rely on my own judgment on everything, especially if, if the equipment is a big part of the purchase. So where are we going at from here? Wh wh what's the next thing to look at? The next thing to look at is the lawn mowing accounts. Now, let me use a very basic example. Let's say that we mow 35 weeks out of the year. That's about how many mows I get here in central Indiana each year. Doesn't mean that it's always nice outside. It might be when it's wet. It might be, you know, it snowed a little bit, but there are leaves down that had to be mowed. It could be a situation like we had many years ago in March where we had numerous 80 degree days that never happens. And we were mowing the second week of March. I mean, it, usually it's the second or third week of April when real mowing really um, resumes. But let's say that for the sake of this example, we have 35 weeks that we're going to cut grass. And let's say this guy says, hey, on the accounts that I have, I make $1,000 a week. So that means you're going to make $35,000. And he's like, hey, I'm going to sell my business for $20,000. And let's just keep everything very basic and say he doesn't have a website. He doesn't have any online reviews or anything like this. He just got out by word of mouth. Okay, no one's gone online to write anything negative about his business. The reality is you making that, that purchase for that amount of money, in my opinion, and the same would be said if you went to a bank uh, to discuss this, is absolutely absurd. 
Guys think that because they make, you know, at the end of the year, $35,000, I'm just using a very basic example. That's not much money at all, but um, they think that they can get a big chunk of money for their business, and that's not the case. The reality is when it comes to lawn mowing specifically, you're looking at 25% of the annual sales, maybe 40%, and that's got to have some of the other things that I mentioned earlier to take into consideration. Uh, if you have a lawn application business, you're looking at 75% of your annual sales to maybe as much as 125, possibly 135%. It comes down to a couple of things. If you have the money out of your pocket and you're willing, you know, you're willing to just spend it, well, go right ahead. You can do that. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're making a wise decision, but it also doesn't mean that it can't pan out for you, you know, in the long run for, for you to be better off because of the purchase, but it's not guaranteed. And it doesn't mean that it's a good financial investment. Um, the, the reality is if you have contracts, okay, if you're buying the contracts, that helps you a little more. But if you're going to a bank and let's say you don't have any income, you don't have anything saved, maybe you've got decent credit, but they're going to look at your ability to repay the loan. Uh, I would always encourage people, if you're really serious about getting into the industry, and you're looking at buying a business instead of starting from scratch, I would encourage you to go and hire um, an organization that specializes in helping people you know, to get started with their business. Maybe go talk to an attorney and talk to you know, a marketing company, for example. A lot of times guys come up and say, hey man, I've got $10,000 and I'm going to start mowing grass. I don't have any accounts, but I, I bought a trailer you know, for $1,500. bucks. I found this more for seven or $8,000. The first thing I think to my mind is, is, no, that's not the best thing you want to do because the reality is you could buy a used mower for half or maybe even less than half and spend that other half and hire a marketing company. That's what you really, really should do. Let the, let the people that specialize in marketing do the marketing for you if you really want to grow. Anytime, once you get out and you get going, especially when you're out mowing, if you've got your business name and a phone number on the vehicle and the trailer, for example, where people can see while you're out, People are going to see you and you're going to get calls over time. Now, maybe initially you don't have it. So maybe you volunteer to mow a couple of lawns each week for a, you know, a couple of uh, people. Maybe they're older or whatever. They're in an area where you want to get lawn work, you know. And so, you know, the neighborhood can get used to seeing your vehicle in there and seeing your quality of work. That can help. I can't tell you how many times over the course of the years when I've been out mowing, a neighbor has come over or someone that lives down the street. Hey, I just left my house. I'm on my way to work. Uh, my lawn guy stopped showing up. I saw your phone number. You know, can you can you take on any more lawns? What would you charge me? You know, when can you start? All that kind of stuff. But the big thing I want to talk with you again, I want to re, you know reiterate here is just because someone is making X dollars at the end of the year doesn't mean that you're just going to you know that you should just go out and write them a big check. That's not how it works. Okay, especially if those aren't written contracts. And I can tell you this because over the years. I've had smaller guys that mow 20, 30, 40 lawns a week go out of business and say, hey, man, I'm going out of business, but I'm trying to find, help my customers find someone to take on the lawn mowing. Can you take on these lawns? And let's say you take them on, and you might even do outstanding work, but there could be, unbeknownst to you, with the new customer, a personality conflict, right? Or maybe they were considering changing all along, or who knows what. The, the reality and the likeliness of you retaining 100% of that that uh, that business that's not under contract is very minimal. Uh, so understand that, you know, just get yourself hooked up with someone at a bank, establish a relationship um, and, and, and look at, you know, getting yourself set up with an attorney too. So you can make sure that you got all your avenues crossed or covered. You know, if they're, they're going to tell you that you're going to need business insurance, um, you're going to need to have uh uh, you know, some sort of a financial plan. I uh, make sure you have any, you know, any licensing that you need to have done in the state, um, all that kind of stuff. Do you have a, you know, a federal employee ID number and, you know, get yourself set up with a bank account and, and so forth and so on. But um, just please, if you take anything from this, the point that I, ultimate point I want to get to is just because some guy says he makes $30,000, $50,000 a year or even 20000 I mean, I saw an ad earlier this year that would pan out that if the lawns panned out for the entire year and if they all paid you, you would make $24,000. And the guy wanted to sell the accounts, I think, for, I don't know, seventeen or eighteen or maybe even $20,000. And I just thought, this guy has no clue what he's doing. Uh, the business and the accounts will come in time if you just grind it out uh, and you work and you do good work. 
Uh, and that means sometimes that when you're out mowing, if you didn't do anything wrong, maybe you go back and you make it right. You know, I mean, if they think that the quality of the cut is off and you think it's okay, evaluate the long-term, um, you know, consequences of not going back. If I go back and I mow it, do I maintain the customer? And maybe it's just a one-time customer. I don't maintain the customer, but now they don't go online and write a negative review about me. And sometimes there are just situations where the customer is just a jerk for a variety of different reasons, and it's just not worth going back. And, and you get a bad review. And I'm telling you, bad reviews aren't the end of the world. They're not, man. I mean, and you don't even have to get smart when you write them back. Um, and, you know, if you respond to their reviews, I would encourage you not to do it immediately while you're emotional. Uh, but uh, you don't have to get on and, and, and write a review, you know, ever. I mean, the truth of the matter is some people out there just don't understand. They let their grass grow. You know, like I said, every year, it's usually the second or third week of April that we're in full swing. I'll get calls at the end of May. I need somebody to cut my grass. And they don't tell you, you know, that it hasn't been cut all spring. Well, I've gotten used to that. And I know how to, to qualify the calls when they come through and the questions to ask. And I'll look at the loan and I'll say, yeah, you're looking at about $300. Well, $300, I can't believe that. That's a ripoff. You know, it's they, the neighbor just had his grass cut for 40 bucks. Yeah, but you've got six or seven weeks worth of grass there. And it's not going to take me 20, 25 minutes. It's going to take me two or three hours, maybe even four. And if you don't want your lawn to die, it's going to have to be bagged. And maybe you don't even bag it for them. But the bigger thing is the hard, you know, the what so many people don't understand is the damage and the wear and tear that it does to your equipment. I see guys do this all the time. They got an eight or nine thousand dollar lawnmower, and they're out cutting grass that's four feet tall. You know what? I, I, all I can do is tell you that your lawnmower is not going to last. Oh, I've done it several times. That's fine. It, it, number one, it just means you're lucky. You didn't bust a belt, break a spindle, or anything. You didn't, you know, cause any engine damage. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you're always going to be able to do it. And not mistake or to you know, eliminate the potential of something being in that lawn. There could be a you know a water main. Uh, there could be, you know, an animal. I've done, I've done lawns where I've made a pass and I've come back and I look down and there's a cat laying down looking up at me and I've almost mowed them. I've mowed baby bunnies before. And as much as a landscaper, I don't like bunnies because they eat the plants. I don't like killing animals. It's a horrible feeling, you know, to see a baby just flopping there because you just mowed it and it's done. Um, it doesn't feel good. And there are some customers that will get mad at you about that. I've, I've mowed tall grass to look over and there's a 40 ounce bottle that I could have hit and it shot across the street. And people don't think about this kind of stuff. But let me tell you this. When I was growing up and I first got started, I had an old lady customer who, who told me, she was a real nice lady, and I mowed her grass for one summer. And she'd always talk to me after I would mow the grass and have me sit on her porch with her, which at the time, I still was too busy to do it, but I did it. I couldn't do that kind of stuff now. But anyway, she said, you know, when I was younger, a man was mowing the grass and he shot a stick across the street and there was a pregnant woman sitting in a chair on a porch and the stick lodged into her stomach and killed the baby. Um, so understand there's big risk with that with that tall grass, but I'm kind of getting off hand here uh, and off uh, of topic. Buying a business, make sure you do your research. And anyone that is legit and selling their business is going to understand and respect that. And they're probably going to show you more time and attention because you're asking the right types of questions. Um, if you have any questions, you can always um, shoot me an email at icutgrassllc at hotmail.com or even comment below. If you have some different ideas that you know, you'd know you want to share, go ahead and include them below. Um, and, and ultimately, hopefully, we can help people make wise decisions and not make bad financial investments. You don't have to buy a business to be successful in this industry. You can start from scratch and build your way up. I hope that you're very successful this year. And to be quite frank, I hope that 2022 is the best year that you've had yet, especially after the last two years where we've had so much stuff go on with COVID-19 and inflation and you know politics and all this other baloney. I hope that this is a good year for you. Thanks for watching.